So today we're going to be talking about personas, and we may talk about scenarios. I probably won't talk about scenarios until Thursday, but they are really strongly related. So let's start off with personas. And of course, the first question that I'm sure you are dying to know is, well, what's a persona? Now, before I tell you the answer, I want to see how much you've picked up on just since the beginning of the semester. So what are some guesses as to what a persona might be? Anyone want to, want to take a wild guess? User. It's related to a user, yes, absolutely. Is it like a type of user? It's, it is like a type of user. Like a, I'm like a model or a, it is, or a structure. Right, so it's like a model or some sort of like a structure that represents your users. So, awesome. See, I should have you give the lecture. Yes. All right, so a persona is basically an archetype of your primary users, who your target users are. So it's an archetype character that's meant to represent a group of users in a role who share common goals. Notice goals is in bold. We're still talking about goals. Attitudes and behaviors when interacting with a particular product or service. And when we're talking about a particular product or service, what we're really talking about is a particular product or service domain. Now, why is that? Because when we first create personas, when we're, is really when we're starting to develop a product or develop the idea of a product. So a lot of times when we're developing personas, we don't actually have a product yet. We're trying to find out about who our users are. And we are building our personas to help us with the design process. Now, what I have up here is what is commonly referred to as a mini persona. Just to give you a little example, I'm just going to go through some of the, the areas that personas include. One is a picture, right? It helps us connect with the person. It also includes a name, age, occupation, so some demo, you know, some Demographics, what is their profile, where are they born, what is their education, what are their interests. Including some interests that you may not necessarily think might be related to your particular product, but is strongly related to that individual's life. Now, I will talk a little bit more later on as to why you want to include some of that information, especially in this day and age. So what are their interests, what are their technical aptitudes, and what are their goals, and various types of goals. So those are the main areas that you want to focus on. But I do want to emphasize, this is a mini persona. I'm going to be showing you a full persona. Now the reason I am making this distinction is because guess what you get to do for assignment four? Personas. Personas. And I don't want a mini persona. I don't want someone who's like this big, I want someone who's life size. So it's going to be a full persona. I can make fun of short people. My husband's shorter than me. So. All right, so with personas, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to capture user characteristics. Who are your users? What is it that we know about our users? How can we take that information and use it in the design process? But here's something that's really important to remember. It is an archetype. It's not a real person. Now, it is synthesized from what we learn about real user characteristics. But you don't want to sit there and say, OK, I'm going to create a persona. My brother is the perfect model. I'll write up my brother. So you don't really want to do that. You need to look at your users as a whole. Remember, it is an archetype. It's a representation. Now, what that also tells us is that it shouldn't be idealized. Now, why do you think a persona should not be idealized if it's supposed to represent our users? Anyone? How many perfect users are there out there? Other than yourself. Oh, you guys are so quiet today. Well, there's no such thing, except for me. 
and you. We're the perfect users. But other than us, right, there are no perfect users out there. There's not an idealized user, so you don't want to create a persona that is idealized, who is perfect, that never makes mistakes, that does everything the way we think they should do it. So it needs to be reflective of your real users, not some idealized version of it. So what you want to do is you want to take this information, what we know about our, our users, and you want to bring them to life. Now some things are obvious, right? What are our users' goals in this particular domain? But other things are not so obvious. Things like you want to give your persona a name. Right? You want to give them some personality characteristics. Give them a personal background. Now, a lot of times, the first time that I start talking about personas, you know, if you've never heard of them, haven't experienced any, any work with them in the past, people kind of look at this and they're, why am I giving this persona a name? Or my favorite, why do I have to put a picture? Does anyone want to take a guess as to why? Because you have to bring them to life. You guys do listen. And what about how we tend to think about users? Do you think that can have an impact? Yeah, it actually can. One of the reasons why we want to bring them to life is because we want ourselves as well as our teammates, the designers and the developers, to actually think about who our users are. We need to connect with them. Now, why is that? Well, because we're human. We are social creatures. We are much more likely to be able to take the perspective of someone else if we are able to have some sort of connection with them, have some sort of similarity with them. And that's something that, if you want to design something that's very usable, you really need to think about. Now, later on, I will be talking about other reasons why you want to use personas, because there are some very, very practical reasons. This is also practical. We just tend not to think of it as practical. But we do want to make sure that these are actually <coughs> archetypes that we and our team can associate with. Now, I've also talked about personas as our primary user. There is something called a primary persona. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But there are also other types of personas. So when you are developing personas for a particular project, you actually are going to be developing multiple personas. So it's not just one. You'll have quite a number. And I've reflected that in your assignment four, which we'll talk about Thursday. So personas, of course, are primarily a design tool. And we want to keep that in mind. We do want to be able to make a connection with this persona that we create. But you want to remember, what is the goal of creating a persona? Could be to have fun, right? Makes life more interesting. And I would say, yeah, you want to have fun making a persona. But it's not the primary goal. We want to use personas as a design tool that's going to help us determine what a product should do and how it should behave. So you want to keep that in mind. And the goals and tasks that are included in that persona, as well as the scenarios, as we'll talk about most likely on, on Thursday, you want to make sure that you are remembering that we are using those to provide a basis for the design effort. This is a tool. We are creating something that is supposed to help us in the design effort. Now, there are a lot of different ways that, that it can help us. I already mentioned one, where it helps us connect with our user. It makes it easier for us to actually think about what the user's goals may be. It also helps with a number of other things. One of them is just communication. Communication within a team as well as communication outside of a team. So communication with your stakeholders. Do you guys know, know what a stakeholder is? 
It can be an investor. It's, um, any, any person um, that it might, or entity that might be you know, affecting any projects. That's right. So it's any person or any entity that might have an effect on or, or have a vested interest in the project. That's who a stakeholder is. It can be an investor. It can be the CEO of a company. It can even be your users. Users are also stakeholders. Developers and designers. You know how we've talked about prior to the midterm? I know you try not to think about before that anymore. We have talked about how sometimes we have different ideas about who our users may be. Right? So we may have a team of five, and each of us have a little bit of a different idea of what that user is really trying to accomplish or who that user is. Personas are a tool to help make sure that everyone on that team has the same understanding and the same beliefs about who your users are. It helps you iron out differences in your perceptions of the users and what their goals may be. Now, it also helps build consensus. Consensus not only within the team, but with your stakeholders. So these two are actually very intricately tied. Now I'm going to jump back to when I told you that, well, you want to add a name, you want to have a picture, you want to have some personal information. Because when you are building consensus and you are communicating with others, this is a great tool to take to people who are stakeholders. Because then it's a very nice way of very quickly illustrating who your users are, who your target users are. It's a lot easier to whip out one page with your persona on it than to sit there and try to verbally describe something to someone. So let's say one of the stakeholders is the VP of the company that you're working for. They're not a technology person, right? They know nothing about developing anything. Do you think they're really, you know, they're going to like a very nice pretty picture and some way of connecting with who the users are versus you sitting there drawing a stick figure? What do you think? Stick figure, persona. Who votes for, who votes for the stick figure? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Have I convinced you yet that we should use personas? Awesome. The one, people in front say yes. Everyone in back is like, no. All right, now personas are used not just in the design phase, but throughout the life cycle. So you can use it to measure the design's effectiveness throughout the life cycle. So you may build your personas at the beginning of the, of the design life cycle, or of the, the product development life cycle, but you will be using it throughout development so that you can go and take a look at your users, because a lot of times as we're going through this process, right, you have to make changes and adjustments based on things such as budget, time, people's view of what, what, what's needed. And there are times where you're going to have to go back and pull out that persona to say, wait, here we have a disagreement about who our users are. Let's see how we defined it with our persona. Now, a persona can also contribute to other efforts like marketing and sales plans. It can help determine who you're going to be marketing to. So it's something that's not just in the development team, but it can be used in other areas of product development. So in developing personas, of course, we want to remember it is a design tool. And if we want to design high quality products, what do we need to focus on? Which I've mentioned. Goals. goals, yes. Thank you. So I want to talk to you about some of the user goals that you typically will include in a persona. Because there are different types of goals. So personas should have about three to four goals each. Because personas should be about a page. Don't make a book. Because no one's going to read it. Remember, this is a tool you want people to use. People like one piece of paper. 
that's easily scannable. So, personas should have three to four goals, and there are different types of goals that you want to include. Now, when I say three to four goals, I don't mean three to four goals of each of these. I mean three to four goals overall, because you are including a lot of other information. Now, you can have more than three to four goals. Three to four goals is the minimum, but like I said, you want everything on one page. So let's look at the goals. Well, first there are life goals. Life goals are basically personal aspirations. They are goals that tend to be pretty common for all humans. So something like, I want to retire before the age of 50. That's universal, right? Is there anyone who doesn't want to retire before the age of 50? Until you reach 50, then you don't want to retire. All right, so they're very personal goals that help us really connect with our persona. Now, here's the interesting part, is that it can also tell you something about the type of people your personas tend to be. So if you have someone who says, I want to retire before the age of 50, could that possibly give you a clue as to something about that person's personality? It could. I'd say they're probably more likely to be more motivated and more, I guess, hardworking because they really think they can retire by 50, or at least they hope. Now, there are also experience goals. Experience goals describe how the user wants to feel while interacting with the product. These are also very personal and very universal. So, when I'm using a product, how do I want to feel? I want to feel competent while using that product. I want to feel like I know what I'm doing. Does anyone want to feel dumb using a product? No, if your user feels dumb using your product, what's going to happen? They'll get frustrated with the product and they don't use it. Yeah, they'll get frustrated and they will probably toss it out the door. So, with experience goals, here we're talking about the user's experience with the product. What is it that they want to experience? Now, we talked about how you want to be competent, right? It could also be that you want a product that is so ubiquitous, right, that is so ingrained in your everyday flow that you don't even realize you're using it. Like the way we, uh, we use smartphones many times. Right? It's very natural for a lot of us you know, to pick it up. Oh, let me check my email. Oh, let me look this up really quick. You don't want to think about that having to use that particular product. You just want it to fit into your life. That's the thing that we're talking about when it comes to experience. All right, end goals. End goals are tangible outcome that the user has in mind when using the product. So what is the purpose of using this product? Why does the user want to use it? So, for example, they may want to be updated about finances over the past month. Right? You're trying to balance your checkbook. Right? You're trying to stay within your budget. So, in using a financials product, this may be your goal. Let's say I'm using my smartphone. Remember the example we did where I had you look up your, uh, what was it, your best friend's phone number? What was the end goal other than to make me happy? Finding the number. Of course, in real life, you would be wanting to call your best friend. Right, so that would be the end goal. Not the task of picking it up and scrolling and those sorts of things, but what is the goal of the user? Now, I will tell you that typically experience goals and end goals, particularly end goals, but also experience goals, do tend to be more helpful for designers. They tend to be more relevant to the design itself. But life goals are still really important in helping you to be able to connect with that user. Well, since I've only convinced half of you so far, why we should use personas, I'm going to give you some examples as to what are some of the things 
that we need to think about and what can, help, what can personas help us with. Now, this is an example from your book. And here's the thing I like to say as we go through these examples. Yes, they are very stereotypical and sexist. I didn't come up with it. I'm tempted to change it every semester, but since this is in your book, this is what I'm using. We'll talk about stereotypes later in this lecture, by the way. I find it very interesting that in the book he has these stereotyped examples and then talks about don't use stereotypes. All right. So here we're going to be talking about a primary persona. As we'll talk about later on, a primary persona is the primary focus of your design. Who is your primary user? That's the primary persona. So I want you to imagine that we're going to design a car. And you come up with this brilliant idea. You know, there are a lot of cars out there. You know, I want to design something that's going to really work well and where I can have the largest market share. So I am going to design a car that fits the needs of everyone. Who thinks that's possible? Well, it's kind of complicated, but I think that uh, looking at the whole, all those things over there, I mean, that we're looking maybe to an SUV. Oh, looking at all these things, you think it could be an SUV? Maybe. Maybe. I like SUVs. I know people who don't, but I like SUVs. So let's take a look at our examples really quick. All right, so here we have a couple of users, right? First we have Alessandro. What does he want to focus on more? He likes speed, right? He wants to go fast and have fun. He wants that cute little nimble sports car that makes him look like oh so cool, right? Get all the attention from many potential significant others he uh, might encounter. All right, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? Maybe it's a convertible, maybe it's not. Sounds awesome, right? Okay, well, except there's some other users you need to think about. Let's look at Marge. What are her goals? Well, she wants to be safe and be comfortable. All right, what does this remind you of? If you want something that is safe and comfortable, and big. Yeah, a minivan. So Marge and the minivan. Right? She just wants to relax, sit back, not have to worry about anything. Right? Pop the kids in the back, strap them in, turn up the radio, be comfortable and enjoy herself. She doesn't care how fast she gets anywhere because the kids are going to scream anyway. And then we have Dale. Dale is a He-Man. He wants to haul big loads. He wants something reliable and strong. Right, with that really strong, strong engine. I can't remember what engines those big pickup trucks have. He wants a winch in the back. Plenty of places to put his rocks. So what, so what does this sound like? Which I just mentioned? A pickup truck. All right, now, here are your users. I want you to design a car that meets all of their needs. I'll give you about 30 seconds before I ask you for some ideas. Anyone? No? Maybe an SUV. Do you think an SUV would make Alessandro happy if you want something that's very quick and nimble? There are some that are kind of sporty. Yeah. There's some that are sporty. Are they as quick and nimble as a sports car? A Porsche? A, a Porsche? There's, there's, a, there's a SUV Porsche? Not a new one. Okay, you have your SUV Porsche. Do you want to put a bunch of rocks in the back? <laughs> no, that's not nice. Yeah, I don't think Dale would be very happy with that. Okay, so maybe not. How about this? This is one idea that students came up with one semester. A transformer car. That would be pretty awesome, right? Think, it, think that would work? With the laws of physics? 
the mechanics permit it, then yeah, that would be sweet. If the mechanics permit it, except that, have you, how many of you have seen the transformers where they go from this teeny little thing to this big bulky thing back to the teeny little thing? What happens to all the mass? Oh, it disappears. It's magic. Magic doesn't exist yet. All right, so if we're trying to design a car to meet all these needs, what's the problem? What do we end up designing? Did you say you can't actually do it? They could do this. They just get a car and create whatever they want out of it. Oh, well, but we're talking about a car that meets everyone's needs, not just one person's needs. They could meet everyone's needs. They design it. That's what I mean. Oh, well, but how are you going to take, let's even take the example of an SUV. How are you going get to an, get an SUV and have it equivalent to a nice, small, sporty sports car? Ask them. <laughs> you know what I think the answer is going to be? Yeah, no. You know, the fact is, is that it actually is not possible. You'd end up designing a car that essentially no one's going to want because ultimately it's not going to meet everyone's needs. You look really, well, you're kind of funky looking too. But that also illustrates why you need to really think about who are you designing for? And having a persona that you can use as a tool can really help you with that. 